Introducing EMC VPlex, which introduces geographically dispersed cache coherency, an active-active presentation model, and the ability to start small and scale out very large. And that delivers the ability to access storage anywhere. One of the most important use cases and one of the most interesting ones is vMotion across long distances at very large scale. What we've got here is we've got a cluster of VMs that's located in Boston. And you can see that uh, there's several clusters. Each one has got roughly uh, uh, 25 VMs for a total of 100 virtual machines that are up and running. In addition, they have a very large uh, OLTP workload running on both sides at the same time. Now, one thing that introduces uh, how interesting this new idea of EMC VPlex is, is here you can see we've got the uh, Swingbench workload running in the uh, uh, Boston location. If you navigate to the VMFS data store, you can see that that individual virtual machine is right there. This is the virtual machine that we just looked at. If we take a look at Hockington, we can see another virtual machine, and that virtual machine is also accessing the exact same data store. Each one of them is accessing it locally, but the VMFS data store is being presented on both sides across a long distance, both simultaneously in a read-writable state. So, uh, is this difficult to use and configure? Uh, couldn't be simpler. So what you can see here is this is the management interface for EMC VPlex. If you take a look, we've got uh, two underlying arrays here that are creating a stretched volume, that VM LUN 000 DR1. Uh, these can actually be uh, uh, any array, not just EMC arrays. So um, it can be heterogeneous environments as well. And if you take a look, here's the first array that's uh, on the Boston side and here's the array on the Hopkinton side. So if we go back to uh, vCenter and let's vMotion that one uh, uh, virtual machine that's doing currently roughly 6,000 transactions per minute. And we're going to move it from Boston to Hopkinton. So it's a simple vMotion. Uh, everyone should be familiar with vMotion. There's no, nece no necessary step to move the underlying storage. And what we're doing now is we're uh, watching that virtual machine do a vMotion between uh, two different clusters. It's already just moved over as you can see there and if we go and we take a look there was no impact on the swing bench workload while it was running. Now moving one virtual machine is cool but ideally you'd like to be able to move lots of virtual machines all at once. So let's just teleport all 100 VMs from Boston to Hopkinton. Once we've clicked on that button you can see now what it's doing is it's doing a mass vMotion. Uh, it's moving all the virtual machines one at a time. Um, and in fact, it's uh, doing them with uh, some degree of parallelism across uh, different nodes of the cluster. Um, and you can see them starting to populate up there in Hopkinton. They're moving at roughly the rate of one every 2.4 seconds. So uh, it's transparent to the host and it's a completely live migration. Very, very simple, but very, very powerful. You now have the ability to easily move workloads at any scale without compromising local availability or local performance um, and be able to do it, uh, that vMotion across long distance. Taking a look at the map, you can see here that the uh, uh, current configuration you know, doesn't have a boatload of virtual machines there in Hopkinton, but you can see with each passing second, uh, a few more are added. And when we come back at the end, we'll be able to visualize the before and the after. We're getting close now to the end. Almost all of the virtual machines have been moved. This has actually been done in, uh, in uh, basically real time. It takes about three minutes to move 100 virtual machines in this example from Boston to Hopkinton. And it's done completely transparently, and it's simple, and it's easy. So we're just about done, and that last VM moves. We take a look at uh, all of the virtual machines are now running in Hopkinton. We could now basically take down the Boston data center and we wouldn't have disrupted our applications at all.